Welcome to Nanad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. UTT and COSTAT paving the way in tertiary education. TN Tech receives more power. And the HDC to expand its housing initiative on the sister isle of Tobago. To our top story, the animation industry in Trinidad and Tobago is expected to experience a boom following a significant MOU signing between the Ministry of Tertiary Education and Skills Training and an international animation studio. A memorandum of understanding between the University of Trinidad and Tobago and a Canadian company Toon Boom Animations Incorporated will see a time of education with entrepreneurship. On Thursday, the MOU was signed by Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, Fazal Karim, Program Coordinator and Lecturer of the Diploma in Animation at UTT, Camille Selvon Abrahams, and CEO of Toon Boom, Joan Vogelsang. Through this signing, students enrolled in the Diploma in Animation will have greater access to Toon Boom's software, exposure to larger networks of international studios and opportunities, and a business incubator where the students would be equipped with the skills and material to start a business upon graduating. There was a need to bring animation into the fold of things in Trinidad and Tobago. Being a multi-billion dollar industry, we recognize that it is really, really important to equip our students and, and um, both adult and young students into the field of animation and digital media. Toon Boom is active in 123 countries, has won two Emmys, and its technology is used in 80% of Saturday morning cartoons. CEO Ms. Vogelsang, who has had a long history of relations with Trinidad and Tobago in terms of animation and digital media, spoke of the significance of the MOU in terms of the growing animation industry. The upside is that, first of all, it's a young industry. It appeals to young people. But secondly, it's a growing industry. There are tens of thousands of jobs internationally without enough people to fill them. And why is it growing? Because all communication today is being done with some form of animated content. So it's not just feature film and television, but it's medical messaging, it's uh, communicating on work training, it's military training, believe it or not. All the military training is done with animation. It's medical uh, transcription. And what we see is the opportunity to be able to have jobs outsourced to Trinidad at the same time as having local content that will be able to also be exported to the region and the rest of the world. The Diploma in Animation has been offered by UTT since 2008 and there are now moves toward offering a degree program in animation as well as in gaming. Minister Karim believes that citizens will capitalize on this opportunity which will also have long-term benefits for the nation as a whole. Trinidad and Tobago citizens are a very creative people. You can see that from our carnival, you can see that from our very many types of, um, uh, in terms of the drawings, in terms of the artistry, in terms of creativity and innovation, it's there. And innovation and creativity can lead to wealth creation. Uh, therefore, what we are seeing here is an opportunity for the University of Trinidad and Tobago to partner with Toon Boom and also to increase the program offerings for our students. The Honorable Minister says that the degree program, once initiated, will be gate-funded and also said there would be various opportunities for persons to gain access to these programs. He also noted the purpose of the business incubator element of the MOU. Very often the universities in the world and the Ivy League universities and those that have been very successful have engaged in business startups for their students while they are in school, while they are pursuing studies. Um, so we want to also emphasize that we do not have to wait for our students to graduate, but we can engage in UTT startups. We could engage in all the higher education startups so that well before, while they're learning, they're earning. That's the, entire, that's the concept we want to, ad, to really advance. Earn while you learn. Toon Boom's client base ranges from major studios creating Hollywood blockbuster animated films to individual animators creating their first masterpieces. Market leading studios using Toon Boom's products include Disney, Nelvana, Warner Brothers, Nickelodeon, and Cartoon Network, just to name a few. Nikolai Edwards, News 4.
Meanwhile, Senator the Honorable Fazal Karim, Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, received a grant of U.S. $100,000 by the Chrome Group of Nigeria. Now, the grant will see the development and delivery of Igbo and Yoruba studies at the College of Science, Technology and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago. Students looking to pursue languages Yoruba and Igbo can now enroll at the College of Science, Technology and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago, COSTAT, Come this July, the Chrome Group, a multi-million dollar Nigerian energy conglomerate, has granted these funds to be used for the development of Igbo and Yoruba language program of studies at cost start over a two-year period. Minister Karim welcomed the donation to be used in the promotion of these languages and described it as a deepening of long-lasting ties. Through this generous gift, the peoples of Trinidad and Tobago will therefore be afforded a much-needed opportunity to gain a more in-depth understanding of a country with which Trinidad and Tobago has linkages that date back to many centuries, to when the West Indies were first colonized. Indeed, Nigeria is a country that can be described as an ancestral home of one of the largest ethnic groups which make up our cosmopolitan population. The gesture comes after Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan visited these shores in 2012. His Excellency Musa John Jen, Nigerian High Commissioner to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, says the establishing of the language school will assist in the expertise this country is to provide in coming months. Trinidad and Tobago is going to be a major hub in due course for the training of Nigerians, not only in Trinidad, but also in spearheading the transfer and replication of the NESC as a facility, both by government and the private sector. I understand the president is interested in replicating NESC in six geopolitical zones of Nigeria so that more students will have access to skill acquisition, especially with the kind of international certification that we have. So we're looking forward to the third quarter of this year when we expect a joint commission between the government of Trinidad and Tobago and Nigeria to take place in Abuja. He called on local businessmen to look at Nigeria as a gateway to new business opportunities. We want to look at the gas monetization. The gas we flare in one day, that's what you use in one year. And that's a lot of billions of dollars we are flaring out there. And we want to look at the partnership where the skills you have and the technology can be transferred to Nigeria. Like some of our professionals have said, it's not rocket science. You have done it here. So it's just a question of shifting the same technology with the financial support of businessmen and government in Nigeria. So we tap into your skills and you tap into our resources. That's how we want our relationship to continue to develop. Currently, members of the Orisha and Spiritual Baptist faiths have expressed interest in participating in the program. However, the language will be used in support of local oil and gas sector professionals traveling to the African state to lend support in the field. Minister Karim noted the long-lasting benefits to be derived from this program. Imagine our educated, trained citizens who have the skills to accomplish or at least to attempt such a bold move by looking at non-traditional markets. The Ministry of Tertiary Education and Skills Training is tasked to build the capacity of our nationals in the tertiary sector. And this now includes the launch of the Yoruba and Igbo studies and the chair through Costat. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. When we come back, TN Tech boosts its power. We'll tell you how. Stay with us. Hundreds of citizens and organizations are expected to benefit from a large charitable undertaking by volunteers and corporate groups as part of the National Day of Caring. United Way, Trinidad and Tobago, will host a National Day of Caring, the largest ever volunteer event in the local charity's history. The event will involve over 57 companies and 1,200 volunteers who will be completing more than 62 charitable projects in communities across Trinidad and Tobago. 
The event will take place on Sunday, May 19th, and the chairman of the Marketing and Events Committee, Mr. Clive Belgrave, detailed the main objective of the National Day of Caring. We believe that if we can enhance and encourage a spirit of volunteerism in our country and in our communities, our whole country would be better off for it. So we are hoping that out of this signature event, on an annual basis, more and more volunteers, more and more companies will come to the table and bring their efforts to bear in the various communities where they operate in order to help those communities develop themselves and be communities that all of us can be proud of. This is the first time in the history of Trinidad and Tobago that so many corporations are coming together to engage in a demonstration of the power of volunteerism to do good for the nation. Projects earmarked for completion on May 19th include repairs and painting of children's homes and homes for the aging, agriculture and landscaping, beach cleanups, recycling, renovation and resourcing of a library, and donations of clothing and hygiene products. We believe that communities will experience uh, the allocation of new resources, in other words, resources that have never been able to be there for them before. We hope that the volunteers who partner with us will not just see this as a one-off um, event, but will continue to uh, build relationships with the uh, organizations that they come into contact with, be it a home for, for the age, uh, be it a, a home for battered women or whatever have you, so that they can, they can in fact become involved in some kind of ministry to these marginalized, marginalized people in our, in our national community. The companies, of course, will also benefit because their profile both in the community and, and nationally, will be enhanced. They will be seen as being good corporate citizens, which they all are. That's why they, that's why they have joined with the United Way. Chairman of the National Day of Caring Steering Committee, Mr. Jervis Warner, stressed that the initiative is seeking to touch lives and communities across the nation, and these efforts are being championed by companies and their employees. We are not just writing checks and giving handouts. We are going to be there ourselves, on the ground, doing work, that makes United Way Day of Caring a big, different, a big difference. It's about people collectively caring enough to personally participate and invest their time and their hearts and minds to build a better society. It is about people and companies caring enough to build and nurture relationships in these communities. In addition to the Day of Caring, United Way will hold a day of activity for 400 children from 16 homes at the Republic Bank Sports Club. Celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, United Way Trinidad and Tobago is part of the global United Way family of 800 entities in 41 countries. Nikolai Edwards, Muse 4. Areas such as St. Anne's, Belmont, Maraval and Mukarapo will get an improved power supply after the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission commissioned a 184,132,33 kilovolt gateway, that's a gateway substation, as part of its efforts to provide more reliable service to residents in North Trinidad. Now, the Minister of Public Utilities, the Honorable Nizam Bashk, and the TNTEC Chairman, Mrs. Sushila Ramkisun Mark, commissioned the Gateway Kilovolt substation at Flamen Street, Port of Spain. The Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission, TNTEC, has embarked on three major projects aimed at preventing power outages, like the nationwide blackout which occurred on Good Friday. Minister of Public Utilities, Nizam Bakch, says... The first phase of a multi-phase project will help TNTech recover from sudden shutdown and restore electricity supply in a shorter time frame. These three projects will enable the system to respond to significant increases in the demand for electricity while improving the reliability and quality of the service provided. Chairman of TNTech, Mrs. Sushala Ramkisun Mark, said the Gateway Project is a $184 million investment geared towards addressing past problems of system overloads which led to shutdowns. Prior to Gateway, the transmission grid was unable to meet the demand of Port of Spain whenever there was a double contingency condition or a failure of plant and equipment at the Port of Spain B station. For the first time, the north of the island 
has this additional capacity up to 100 to 130 megawatts. Although geared specifically toward the northern part of the country, TNTEX Mrs. Ramkisun Mark said other initiatives are in the works to bring a reliable electrical supply to citizens throughout the country. Public Utilities Minister Nizam Bakch says the commissioning of the substation is part of government's larger developmental plan aimed at propelling TNT's electricity sector into the 21st century. The areas that will benefit directly from the projects encompass Upper Port of Spain, including St. Anne's, Belmont and Maraval, Lower Port of Spain, and as far west to areas such as Mucarapo and Boundary Streets, and to the east as far as the Abattoir. He said two similar projects will be implemented, bringing excess power from Trinidad Generation Unlimited TGU Power Plant at La Brea and the West Moorings Cluster, which will increase the capacity to the Western Peninsula. The Public Utilities Minister said works are underway at over 30 substations across Trinidad and Tobago. He said his ministry hopes to improve the quality of life of citizens by improving the quality of service. Joseph Lopez, News 4. In other news, the National Mentorship Program has held its 2013 graduation ceremony. The ceremony saw more than two dozen young people receive life skills training in an effort to better themselves. The National Mentorship Program can address part of the troubled landscape plaguing our society, the problem of violent youngsters. So says Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Ms. Jennifer Boku Blake. Ms. Blake presses home the point that the program has a lot to offer the youth of this nation, particularly those with troubled or angry childhoods. To provide a support system for at-risk youth. Two, to encourage individuals to take responsibility for their thoughts, feelings, perceptions, and behaviors. Three, to teach individuals new and more positive ways of relating to their peers. Four, to enable youth to strengthen their leadership and management skills and widen their career opportunities. And five, to promote community wellness by inculcating sound values and positive attitudes. Ms. Buku Blake insists the National Mentorship Program can teach many invaluable lessons to the citizens of this country. The value of patience if we are to cultivate a culture of peace among us for our children now and in the future. It has taught us the meaning of the words of the great Mahatmas that we are to be the change we wish to see in the world and through sacrifice and nurturing, we all have learned that one act of random kindness every day can change the world. National Mentorship Program Coordinator Gabriel Cumbermack says the program seeks to build a culture which this country has long neglected. When you give voluntary service, as the mentors have been giving to you mentees, it is laudable and it is something that personally I want to see grow in our country. The whole idea of people giving service to others just because you can do it. Not because you're getting pay or you have to. Creating that culture of service is what the mentorship is all about. Because somebody is giving service to you all and I very much want to thank those mentors who have gone through that period and those of you who are willing to make another, um, take another mentee under your wings. Persons willing to become a mentor can do so by searching Google for the National Mentorship Program, clicking on the first link and following the instructions on the website. Gregory McBurney, News 4. When we come back, the Fight the Fat campaign continues. Stay with us. The Housing Development Corporation has given the parents of the country's first sextopulets, so or that should be sextopulets, assistance in starting their family. This as the couple was presented with the keys to an HD house by Housing Minister Dr. The Honorable Rudal Munilal. Smiles of joy and gratitude were evident as the parents of this country's and by extension the Caribbean's first sextoplets received the keys to their brand new HDC home. The couple, Kiran Cummings and Petra Lee Foon, 
were almost overwhelmed with emotion and could barely thank HDC for their assistance. I'd like to thank the government, HDC and the Ministry of Housing for helping us in this process. We are truly, truly appreciative of this. Housing Minister Dr. Rula Monilal reveals the young family will be given a house near to their relatives in central Trinidad. The family here would be provided with a three-bedroom single family unit at Edinburgh South uh, in central Trinidad, Shaguanas around there. And um, at a, the estimated cost of this unit is $375,000. Uh, it is done on a on a license to occupy basis at first, so the family moves under what's called LTO. And then we, we put all the procedures in place for full purchase. Minister Munilal says he has done all in his power to assist the family. He is now urging other organizations and concerned individuals to support the young couple as they enter this new stage of their lives. In this situation, of course, there are, there are several other demands on a family like this for you know, uh, the necessary um, provisions for such a family. And they are, they'll need much more help. Uh, that help, of course, we, we hope will be forthcoming. At the HDC, we will try our very best to see what more we can do to assist. But uh, families like these and others require assistance, and we hope that the voluntary sector as well could support. Dr. Munilal says HDC will work closely with the family to minimize the financial strain they face given the heavy financial burden placed on the parents of sextuplets. Meanwhile, addressing the issue of housing in Tobago, the housing minister says the expansion of the HDC housing initiative in Tobago is currently being explored. Looking at financial options for the THA in providing housing in Tobago, their need is by definition much smaller, I think about 5,000 housing units. But the problem they have is their finances and having the necessary finances to support that housing program. And we discuss as well the construction program so that the HDC as the HDC embark on an expansive program of home construction now in Trinidad. We can also assist Tobago in construction uh, of their own housing estates so that we have had a very good meeting with the THA this week. I intend in a few weeks to follow up on that with further discussions and or a visit to Tobago to look at um, their housing stock and possibilities across there. Gregory McBurney, News 4. As we wrap up, corporate Trinidad and Tobago is doing its part to fight the fat as the Ministry of Health has embarked on a campaign to promote a healthier lifestyle for citizens. Nestle recently held its first health fair and 5K at the Queen's Park Savannah, themed Better Body, Positive Mind, Miles of Life. There was tremendous support for the event as hundreds came out to take part in the festivities and adopt a healthier lifestyle. The objective here today is really to get us aware of what it means to lead a healthy lifestyle and of course to give us the opportunity to be active and run or walk the 5K. So we're hoping that after today we are all going to take away one or two things that are very important for us to lead a healthy lifestyle and if it is only that you have to exercise regularly, well, I'll be very happy. The numerous booths provided information on healthy alternatives to some of the poor food choices that persons make each day, and there were even activities for the kids. The various stakeholders also offered opportunities for free mammograms, blood pressure checks, sugar level checks, eye examinations, BMI tests, and much more. Health Minister Dr. The Honourable Fuad Khan praised Nestle for taking the initiative to secure a healthier Trinidad and Tobago. Members of Nestle, thank you ever so much for bringing corporate Trinidad into the Fight the Fat campaign. Healthy lifestyles and also healthy eating and healthy living. We have a serious problem in this country with obesity. We have been termed the third fattest country in the world, not just the Caribbean, the world. So this exercise here is the beginning of us dropping our rankings in that, fight, in that fat campaign worldwide. Following the minister's remarks, the participants engaged in a warm-up session using the ever-popular Zumba exercise. <laughs> Thank you.
Then it was time for the main event, the 5K, as everyone hoped to make it to the finish line and showing just how fit they are. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.